Hey, hello everyone. I'm Rohan Prabhu. Uh, I'm the founder at uh, CommandK.dev. Um, I, I came across this amazing talk by Bhupendra and Pratap about how they did data anonymization uh, over at LinkedIn. Um, to give a bit of uh, background about me, uh, I was director of engineering over at Jupiter, um, which was one of India's first new banks. Um, and then, you know, being in the fintech space and in the neo banking space, of course, um, this is this is one of those aspects: data privacy, uh, user data protection, anonymization. That is very very close to our heart. A, of course, from the perspective of regulation and compliance and what is simply required for us to be in business, uh, but also simply, you know, when you're dealing with people's money, um, you you have a commitment and, and you've got to live up to that commitment that you're always going to protect your data and privacy. And and some of those efforts at Jupiter uh, were led there by me. Um, so also Hasgeek has been gracious enough to, you know, invite me over for a reaction uh, to, to LinkedIn's version of, of uh, you know, their data anonymization layer and their privacy protection layer. Um, so, so just, just a couple of thoughts uh, from my side. Uh, first of all, like a great shout out to Bhupendra and Pratap for uh, an amazing deep dive into the architecture over at LinkedIn. Um, and of course, you know, uh, LinkedIn is, is uh, a company, the scale at which, which it is that just makes this challenge uh, 10 times more impressive uh, for them to have solved it or you know, even take a crack at it. Um, at, at, the, at the very outset, uh, basically, uh, you know, the, the success of LinkedIn's implementation lies in the fact that they have figured out uh, the central points where data is either ingested or processed or data is read from. And those are the places where, you know, you have these uh, primitives of read and write or maybe even higher level primitives of data transformation, which kind of allows them to centralize the control of uh, you know anonymization, whether you want to do anonymization at read time or at write time as well. Um, in, in, that, in that aspect for all companies who are committed to this and even regulation is going to just get more and more stringent about it. So when I look at this as, you know, platformization, I think is the big bet, uh, you know, because platformized services are a lot more aware of the underlying data scheme structure, the lineage of data. And, and so this, the, the, a central platform piece is, you know, much better poised to be able to detect where data goes and how it is used. Um, and the undeniable fact, of course, simply being that they are able to build other abstractions, which might sometimes be higher level, uh, like the ones we saw in DALI, uh, which they have written. And, and the centralization, uh, you know, having simpler primitives of read write allows them to, get, to build scalable uh, privacy and compliance operations. And, and when I say scalable, I'm not just talking about scalable in terms of RPS, right? But it's practices that grow even when you're adding 20, 30 services every year, you're probably adding 50 engineers a year, and you know, you're writing code at like a rapid, rapid pace. And um, across all of this, you're still maintaining all of your operations around privacy, anonymization, uh, some cases even localization, and then that's still scalable. So it's, it's really an impressive extent to see the extent to which their user data has grown, uh, it was uh, the, the challenge on nearline storage is like even more crazy. Um, so the, the lookup table implementation is what's kind of really, um, it's very um, uh, innovative. Uh, the fact that, you know, you just, you the data has to be scrubbed out or data that has to be anonymized, you keep some reference to it and at any point of read, write or transform. You have like this perfect places where you can use the LUT to kind of figure out whether you want to do like a like an offline purge or, or a data purge or you know anonymize it. Um, by large, uh, one aspect that really stands out and this takes me back to the time when we implemented the PI reduction system at Jupiter, and I think this really holds the key to a successful compliance tech strategy and and not just compliance, right? Again, as I said, it's also your commitment to protecting your users' data. That applications continue being built the way they always have, right? Towards towards the end, they have this comment on you know databases and database and rows and columns are rows and columns, and and all efforts to protect user data are all essentially centralized, right? So because what happens now is a it allows the right decisions to be made at a central level, uh, it allows for enough flexibility as advancements in compliance tech are made as more regulations come in, people figure out smarter ways to uh, build more safeguards for their users. And the most interesting thing, the most important thing is that you're still allowing the exact same velocity and pace for engineering where efforts around data protection are not perceived as a burden. So that helps keep your organization's commitment that much more active uh, because people a, who are not expert in making decisions are not. Software engineers are great at writing code and they continue to write it at the same pace. You're releasing features, you're releasing your services out at the exact same pace. And 
it's a cross cutting concern right so so the compliance tech is a cross cutting concern and it should be seen that way and i think the the architecture of linkedin of this is just fantastic and it's a testament of you know how you really imbibe uh, the the concept of uh, implementing cross cutting functions by having a very very uh, strong strong platform layer and i i think i think that's the that's a key insight for me um from the site and and i think that could in general be the advice for um any companies looking at going down um, the compliance tech route as well thank you